Hey guys, what's up? Today I'm here to show you how to make a do-it-yourself pyroelectric infrared sensors, commonly known as PIR. So these right here are the two PIR devices that we have. And I'll show you later on on how to make use of this uh, for added home security. So you are probably wondering um, why we're having this video and precisely the reason I'm coming out with this one is because for the last couple months I got questions related to home security. These questions are framed towards enhancing or kind of like putting additional security measures at home. So I thought maybe this video can supplement that. Typically in our home we already have security measures in place, right? Perhaps we have a door with a double lock, or maybe you have a double door, or probably you have a dog, probably a fierce big one, or maybe you have CCTV. But sometimes these are not enough to deter intruders. Or in the Philippines, we know these guys are what we call akyat bahaygan. So here, I hope by doing this do-it-yourself, it gives us an idea on how to put another layer of security to our home. So let's start. I'd like to first cover here the general idea behind the DIY, okay? The PIR device is the main brain of this do-it-yourself uh, PIR activated alarm system, okay? So basically, this is an electronic module if you try to, uh, you know, um, open this up, you'll see a, a, a lot of uh, circuit, a module, uh, uh, electronic circuit, and it has a sensor right here. This is another type of PIR. This is a much more, um, I would say, smaller in scale, and typically I use this for my Arduino. This one is a 12 volt uh, PIR device. And by the way, we have different parameters and different types of PIR. But for these demonstrations, I'm gonna make use of this 12 volt PIR device, okay? So the idea here is that the electronic sensor measures infrared, infrared uh, light radiating from objects in the field. So when we talk about objects, this can be from human or animals that emit body heat. So once the PIR detects the infrared heat, it will then trigger an output. Okay? So take the case of this 12 volt um, PIR system here. We get here a input, okay? So in other words, this is to be powered by a 12 volt power source and the output here, okay, which will trigger once a body heat has been detected. So in this case, uh, the output is also a 12 or 24 volt device, okay? So later on, we're gonna talk more about that. But in other words, uh, the, the concept here is that uh, PIR to work, it needs a source of power, which in this case is a 12 volt power source. And uh, some PIR, or again, uh, what we call a uh, pyroelectric infrared sensor can be powered uh, by using the 220 or the 110 grid type uh, power supply. These are the typical, you know, um, home outlets that we have in our grid or mains in our home. So they can also have a 110 volts if you live in the States, or you can get a PIR that is being powered by 220 volts if you live like, say, in the Philippines. But likewise, the sensitivity of the sensor can differ based on the PIR that you have. So in some PIR, some sensor can have uh, probably roughly around 4 to 6 uh, meters uh, where it can detect the, the bad heat signal. Some may be more than that. So it has different parameters and configuration as well. Okay? And likewise, um, the load activation can also differ, okay? Now, let's start showing how to connect all the pieces together, okay? Um, 
For this demonstration, I'd like you to uh, I'd like to introduce to you my helper guy. Hi, helper guy. Are you doing okay? Are you ready to help me? Okay, good. Thank you. All right. Now, so um, for this particular one here, like I mentioned earlier on, it needs to be powered by a 12 volt battery. So I have here a lead acid type battery okay so this is a 12 volt battery right here okay that will feed up power okay and that would be connected right here on my input source in the input you have positive and negative likewise in the battery you have the positive and the negative and I just want to talk to you real quick here that if you guys are not comfortable working with electricity or anything that has something to do with you know connecting uh, that has to make use of some power source I suggest don't do it have somebody to work with you okay because like for instance this battery is quite sensitive if you you know mess around with this polarity it might explode so just a, a, a word of caution anyways um like I said this will power off power off the PIR and then the one that we need to activate or the load that will will activate once you know the sensor detects a body hit is in this case this one right here so this is a uh, it's actually a siren that would uh, light up and at the same time could emit a very high decibel sound so yeah so this will be one of our output and also depending on you know uh, how would you know, how you want to configure your setup you could also probably just you know trigger an output by just having let's say a light in this case this is a customized um, bunch of uh, light emitting diodes that I have just made and this is kind of like my flag lamp so to speak which can also be used as an output and again the output that this PAR support needs to be on a 12 to 24 volts so this is a 12 volt this is also a 12 volt device okay now I'd like at this point I'd like to probably give you an idea more or less by just uh, doing a quick demonstration or probably just a quick drawing first on how uh, we could come up with these pieces all together so here and I apologize for my bad drawing by the way so we got here our PIR okay so it has uh, an input and it has an output okay now for our input it will be the source of power so we have here our 12 volt battery okay so this is connected as our main source of power positive negative and for the output we have our lamp or the or the siren okay and again I apologize for my bad handwriting here and which is also a 12 volt type device okay so this is a typical setup I'm not sure if you could see it or probably need to turn it around so this is the typical um, setup it's quite easy actually it's a uh, straightforward uh, wiring um, uh, that you could you know uh, connect all these pieces together but here's the here's the thing here I would suggest if you're going to do something like this I suggest that you make use of a 12 volt uh, battery uh, system as your source of power right here just like this and why because in some cases if you wanna uh, if you want to use a PIR that is being powered by a 110 or 220 AC grid and let's just say for for some reason you have a power outage the power outage can be you know anything that is being uh, brought by let's say a uh, natural disasters let's say a typhoon and certainly once you have that then you no longer have a source of power feeding off to your PIR and certainly you can uh, by utilizing a battery you can have a standalone setup where you can have a continuous um, I alarm system activated but the question here is that what if the battery what if the battery gets depleted because we know that 
the 12 volt battery here also have limited source of power, right? So in other words, we have to have a way on how to continuously charge the battery. So I thought, you know, why not leverage on solar panel? So in this case, uh, what I'll do, and if you may, helper guy, can you please hand me up the solar panel right here? Okay. So this is the solar panel, okay, thank you very much. This is the solar panel right here that will connect to the battery, which in turn charges off the battery every day so that it continuously provide power to my PIR and of course to my triggering device. So that's the configuration that we want to achieve here. Okay, so just take it away. So again, going back to the drawing here, if that's the case, and I, if you may, um, there will be here a panel, okay? It's a solar panel, PB, portable voltaic um, type. And then this is to be connected to your battery so that it continuously charges your battery, which in turn provides power to your PIR and, of course, to your output or to your load, okay? So that's the main uh, idea that we want to put in uh, on this uh, type of uh, the PIR alarm activated system. Okay, so at this point, uh, I'd like to put this into a demonstration and uh, I'm just gonna go back to you uh, real quick. Let me just wire this up all together and come back to you with the actual demonstration. Hey guys, we're back. Um, so right now, we have connected all these together except the battery. So we have our siren right here which is then connected to our PIR on the output. The first two slots to my left are the output slots. So the first one here is the negative and the positive. So that's about it for the load, which will trigger once the sensor detects uh, an infrared signal or you know, body hit. Right now it's not triggering yet, obviously, because the battery right here is not yet connected. So I just kind of like wire this uh, a long wire here because if I connect the battery using a short wire certainly it will trigger right away because you know the sensor will, will detect me standing up not close to the to the PIR so what I thought is just I have a long wire where I need to put the battery probably like a few meters away so that once I put the battery it won't trigger that first and then I'll come back with a short demonstration depicting how this will trigger if a possible intruder, let's say a, a, a rubber, is trying to break into your house and this guy right here detects the, that that guy breaking in, it then trigger the device with a loud a sound and a siren. Okay? So yeah, so we'll come back to you with the demo. Uh, but meanwhile, probably you guys are asking about how much would it cost to have this uh, whole configuration in place. Well, um, I bought this one right here for, I think it was like $5 through AliExpress, this siren here. The PIR, I think it's roughly around another, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's less than $10. So, and of course the solar panel, uh, I bought that in Cedar King back in the Philippines for around like 1,000 pesos, right? 1,500 pesos, I believe. And the battery is roughly around ten dollars. So all in all, to have this whole setup in place, you just probably uh, have to uh, come up with less than less than three thousand, or maybe like close to uh, two thousand plus to be able to have the complete setup. So yeah, so the parts are easy to get. Uh, like I said, you can get it through AliExpress online, or you can get it through eBay. Uh, I have checked eBay. I've seen a lot of these, a bunch of these. Uh, of devices are available as well for online purchasing. Um, probably you, get, you can also get it off some local hardware in your place, but but yeah, you have to check that out. So battery and solar panels, I'm sure CDR King has that, so it's easy to get, but uh, this PIR, probably you, you need to go online to get this. But yeah, but we'll come back to you with, a, with the actual demonstration how it works. Hey guys, we're back, and today we're gonna do a quick demonstration now um, I'm probably standing away, uh, probably around seven to eight meters away from the PIR sensor. So, um, and the way we'd like to do this is that 
we're gonna have here again i need the help of my helper guy right here hey helper guy so what we're gonna do here is that helper guy will pretend to be uh an intruder trying to get in through the house and as he goes closer to the pi uh, to the alarm system the pir and the moment he gets detected by the system it will then trigger an alarm and that would basically deter him from breaking in the house so uh i might need to uh zoom in a little bit so you guys can see um this is our p IR alarm activated system right there so that's the one that will trigger um, that siren right there the load once a body hit infrared hit is detected so yeah so let's do it um, are you ready okay all right here we go So right now, helper guy is sneaking his way right here, trying to get in, okay. And as he goes nearer right now to the sensor, oh, he's getting on the side here, okay, get in, get in. He's getting closer now. There you go, the alarm system sound it up and that triggers that um i just need to cut off the light and the and the sound right now but certainly that is what we should be expecting once an intruder try to break into our place so once again this is a simple do it yourself uh pir alarm activated system and uh you know if you have